Okay, I'm, I'm doing this teaching because uh, some preachers have taught that the verses I'm going to give you where it says sons of God means fallen angels. So I'm going to kind of straighten with the word of God. I'm going to show that that's not true. And I'm going to show you through the word of God what these verses mean. So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 and then 13. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also is for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, <clears throat> which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the, earth is, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. With the earth. So I read all that. This is, this is Genesis chapter 6. Let me, let me show you what it says in Genesis chapter 1. It says, this is God. And God saw everything that he had made, everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So just chapter 1, God said everything, everything was very good. All it took was six chapters for us to mess things up. Now he wants, he says they repented the Lord. It's not that, you know, like we, we repent from sin. He's talking about it, he, it, he's in regret that he made this, that he done this. That's what it means, not repent like we think of it. But in six chapters, see how bad we are? God said everything was very good, everything. And in six chapters, we, we messed it all up. Man did. This is like most of us today. Think about it. You get born again, and most people who get born again, they get all excited. They've given their life to the Lord, and they're all excited and everything. But it don't take long. It don't take long when the temptations of the world creep back in. And before you know it, they're back like they were before. A lot of Christians don't stay fired up for the Lord. And this is what happened here. I mean, it just took six days before the people got away from the Lord. Six days. I mean, uh, six chapters. We don't want this to be us. When we get born again, that excitement, that I mean, we're not. We're gonna have our downs, okay? Where we're sad, whatever, on whatever happens. But our rejoicing and our praise in the Lord—that should be always. That shouldn't go down, okay? Even in our bad times, the Lord is still with us. So we should always praise Him, always. But like I said, uh, after a little while, we seem to get away from it and before you know it we're just living the same old life we were living before maybe not quite as bad you know but we don't make them number one in our lives like I said you have preachers teaching that sons of God in this verse verse 2 means fallen angels if you notice that these verses it doesn't say anything about angels it doesn't say anything about angels here everything is man, men that's all I was talking about. I mean, and I'm going to show you why they think this means fallen angels. But in the, if you just read this, these verses that I gave you, does it say anything about angels? 
All it says is about man. How, how it repented God that even made man. These eight verses are talking about men. If it was talking about fallen angels, then the Lord would say something about the angels. In fact, he should be saying he's going to destroy the angels. Because they're the ones who are coming down and uh, taking women onto wives and having babies. So the Lord should have said something about that, about the angels. But he's just addressing men here, right? If, he's, if these were angels, then somewhere in these verses he should say something about the fallen angels are the ones I need to destroy. They're the ones who's being bad. If people, those people who preach this, teach this, if they really believe that these are fallen angels, if they really believe that, and they took on the women of the earth and had babies, then I would suggest if this is true, I would suggest women to stay home 24-7. Because fallen angels is not like they, saw, they, they look like angels with wings. Because everywhere in the Bible, at least with the angels of God, and I'm going to show that, they all look, they, they appeared as men. Like me. Men. They didn't appear with wings on them. Now, they do have angels with wings, but it doesn't say anything about them coming on earth. That's talking about like in Revelations and stuff. So women, if this is true, if I was a woman, I'd be scared. Because you never know if you're making it with a fallen angel, with a demon. What are fallen angels? Demons. Right? If this was true. You know, sometimes all it takes is just a little common sense to understand a verse. I mean, really, if this was true, women should be afraid today. They should be. Nowhere in the Bible are the demons called are called sons of God. This is the only place where they get this. And I'm going and I'm getting ready to show you. Like I said, here, sons of God does not mean fallen angels. Now I am going to read a verse where it says sons of God, and it does mean angels, but not fallen angels. Okay? And I'll show you that. Now the Bible does say a little bit on way, what angels look like. It gives a little description on, on, on the angels, just a little. But the focus is not what do angels look like. The focus is on the message they bring us. That's what the focus should be on. Not what do angels look like. Luke one thirteen. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for the prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So an angel of the Lord, of the Lord, when it's of the Lord, an angel of the Lord appears or speaks to, the, to humans, it's always a good message. Right here the angel was telling Zacharias, hey, Elizabeth is going to have a child and that's going to be John the Baptist. Luke one thirty, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Again, this was good news. When angels appear to men or talk to men, it's good news. Now, this is Steve, Stevens, one of the disciples. He was uh, speaking to the high priest and the councilmen around them. In Acts 7, 48-53, he says, How be it the Most High, the Most High is speaking about Jesus, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith, it says right here, Jesus didn't dwell in temples made with hands. And it says, As does prophets said, this is what the prophet said in verse 49, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Talking about Jesus. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. Remember what we talked about, uncircumcised heart? It's a person who hasn't given their heart to the Lord. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one. Of whom you have been now the betrayer and murderer. So what he's saying right here. You killed the prophets that spoke about the Messiah coming. You killed the prophets. And then he says, you even betrayed the Messiah who you killed. That's what he's saying right here in this verse. And then verse 53. 
who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. What he's saying, you have disobeyed the laws of God that you received from the angels. So the angels brought these messages to these religious leaders. And they disobeyed them. Again, angels. These are angels of God. Now Galatians 3.19 Wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The law was given to people to show how sinful they were. This is why the laws was given. The Ten Commandments. You know, if you keep the Ten Commandments without breaking them, not one, with thought or deed, you don't need Jesus. But nobody could do it. Nobody could keep the Ten Commandments. Nobody. Because you, we break them with our thoughts. Easily. Okay? So nobody could keep the Ten, Man Ten Commandments. Except for Jesus, of course. So God gave us another way of being saved. That's why he told Abraham that the promise would come through Abraham through his seed. Remember we, we talked about that? The seed of Abraham was going to be the Messiah, the Son of God. He says, I'm going to promise you this. This Son of God, this Messiah, will, will pay for those sins that we cannot pay for. Hope you all remember that teaching. But that's what it's saying right here in this verse. So, he gave us one way of getting saved. That's just keeping the Ten Commandments and not breaking them. Which we're going to read in Deuteronomy. Chapter 5, verse 32 and 33. He's, he tells them, Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. So right here, God is not excusing sin at all. He said, I have commanded you this way. And he said, I don't want you going to the right or to the left. What he's saying is, you cannot sin at all. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and, ye, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. So man's part was to obey. That was man's part. God's part was to save. To give life. And like I said, since we couldn't do the Ten Commandments and, and the other laws, God said, okay, I'm going to have to bring, I'm going to have to give you another way of salvation. And praise God, he did. And that was Jesus. Most of Moses, like I said, most of the laws Moses gave. He gave the Ten Commandments and he, there was other laws. <clears throat> but others came from angels, like it says in verse that I just gave you in Acts 53, who have received the law by this position of angels. So it's like right here saying they didn't listen to the angels. The religious leaders didn't listen to the angels. The angels gave some of the laws. Moses gave the Ten Commandments, but there were other laws. And right here it says it was given by the angels. Okay, I'm talking about angels of God right now. And when it was, and it was said back in Galatians 3.19, it was a, ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator and that mediator was Moses Moses at that time was the mediator between God and man God spoke to Moses and Moses spoke to the people several times okay now back in Genesis 6 4 it also said that there were giants in the earth remember the verses I just read it said there were giants in the earth well I gave a teaching on the mark of Cain. And most people, most people believe that mark was being black. Most people think that was the mark of Cain. The mark of Cain was given to him. Why? The Lord said, I'm going to give you the mark to protect you. Now, how many black people, especially way back, way back, how many black people felt protected? Especially in the time of slavery. Did they feel protected? No. The mark of Cain is not black. Which in the teaching I taught through the scriptures that the mark of Cain is he was a giant. God made him a giant. That was his mark. Now giants, they were protected because nobody messed with them. Except for little David. King David. 
he took on a giant. But of all, all of Israel, the armies of Israel, nobody wanted to attack the Philistine, which was a giant, which was ascended from Cain. Okay? So, this, that there were giants in the earth, there was. Those giants came from Cain. And, they, and then back, it says, they took on wives, well, these, with, they took on wives of all which they chose. Now, I'm going to show these are Jewish men. I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead, but these were Jewish men. These sons of God, these were Israel men. They were Jewish men. And what happened was they took on wives of other nationalities. Jews were supposed to marry Jews back then. Because they were, they were supposed to be uh, people of the Lord, people of God. And these other ones were not. They didn't believe in God. But these men, they took on, they chose from other nations whatever wives they wanted. And this is what came out of them. That's why they, the Lord says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He's saying, you know, they're just totally disobeying me. Because they knew that they should have just married Jewish women. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But I'm just showing right here, you know, giants. Yes, there were giants. And the Jewish men married some of the wives that were ascendants from Cain. And that's why these, these men were like God said. Hope you all understood me there. If you didn't, just shake your head. No, I didn't understand you. Now the Bible, the Bible shows that the angels are not male or female. Remember that. In the Bible, the angels were not male nor female. Neither the fallen angels. An angels are angels. You got your fallen angels and you got your regular angels. Neither one of them are male or female. Mm -hmm. Matthew 22.30 For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So there's no marriage. When we, when we all go to heaven... It's not going to be like me and Jody is going to be married in heaven. And we're going to know each other. But, we're, but there is not going to be any marriage. Okay, The Bible plainly says in the resurrection when we go to heaven. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. But they're as the angels. So there's not a man woman you know, marriage thing. And what is marriage? I've taught on when does marriage begin? When you have intercourse. You become husband and wife when you have intercourse. Right here, they're not going to have any marriage, so there's not going to be any intercourse. And the angels, they're, the angels are not male or female. So how could angels be having sex with women here on earth if, if these angels are fallen angels that like some people are teaching? Because right here it says it, angels are not male or female. The, the angels of God, many times the angels of God appear as men but they're not males they appear as men but they're not males well, what about some of their names they mentioned that Gabriel is it just a name? well I was getting ready to tell you angels are men nowhere in the Bible does it say an angel was a woman or, or a child everywhere it talks about angel it was a man it, it says it was a man everywhere Nowhere, nowhere in the Bible, you can't find it. It's not in there where it called an angel a woman or a child. Like I said, now, down here with humans, male and female, we have a difference. And that difference tells us what restroom to go to. Okay? But angels didn't have that. Hope they understand that. In Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plans of memory and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day now it says right here and the Lord remember that and the Lord appeared verse 2 and he lifted this is talking about Abraham and he lifted his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him so right here the Lord is appearing to Abraham as a man plainly says it verse 1 and the Lord appeared and then the very next verse it says Abraham looked and lo, he saw three men standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. And he bowed himself toward the ground. 
What's that mean? When he bowed himself toward the ground. He worshipped them. What did I say worship was? Worship is when you fall to the ground. So he knew who this was, who these three men were. And it's a long teaching. I'm not going to do it. But uh, these three men, most there's many teachers that believe that this was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit appearing as men. And verse 3, And said, My Lord, if now, and now he's calling them Lord, because he bowed down to them. Right here it's men. He bowed down to these men. So he recognized them as being, he recognized them as being the Lord. Because he didn't worship men. Abraham didn't worship men. So right here he's worshiping these men and he's calling them Lord. So Abraham knew who these, who these angels were. And said, My Lord, if, if now I found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. And then in verse 16, And the men... It's calling them men. And the men rose up from hence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Okay, so it's the Lord. The Lord has called them. And they've been called men. And from 16, all the way, from verse 16 to 32, this is when Abraham, if y'all remember, this is when Abraham was talking to the Lord and saying, Lord, if I can find Fifty men in Sodom, will you not destroy it? And God said, okay, I won't. Mm -hmm. And then Abraham said, well, what if I just find 25 men? And on down, all the way down to, Ab there was no righteous men in Sodom. Oh, he was looking for righteous men. Yeah. He said, if I can find this many righteous men in, in Sodom, which is Sodom and Gomorrah, right here it just says Sodom. Abraham was trying to get them to not to destroy it. And then the Lord was saying, okay, if you can find this many, I won't. But uh, he didn't. And in verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned on to his place. So Abraham went back to his house, and the Lord, very next verse, is the next chapter, but is the very next verse. And there came two angels. Now it's calling them angels. He called them Lord it called them men. Now it's calling them angels. Because this is, even though this is the next chapter, it's the very next verse. It's the very next sentence. Because because the Lord said, I'm going to Sodom. So in verse 19, verse 1, And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So we see... These are still the same men, right? They're still the same. Abraham bowed down to these men because he saw that it was the Lord. Lot is doing the same thing here. But right here it says angels. And in verse 5, And they called unto Lot. Now, now these, these men, these angels, went with Lot into town. And in verse 5, I'm just skipping these verses because I'm not going to read all of it. But in verse 5, And they called unto Lot. The men from the town, they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men? So the men in town even looked at him. He didn't, they didn't look at him as angels. Like I said, angels don't look like angels like we think. Angels look like men. Because these men of the town said, Where are the men which came unto thee this night? Bring them on out unto us that we may know them. And Lot told him in verse 8, Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So several times it's calling the men here. You understand? You're with me so far? And then in verse 10, But the men, now the angels... Back in verse 1, these, these angels, but verse 10, it says, And the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. In verse 15, And when the morning arose, now it's calling them angels. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city, which they were going to destroy. Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And in verse 18, And Lot said unto them, talking to these angels, talking to these men, And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Again, Lot, when he bowed to them up, up here, when he worshipped them at the top, and down here in verse 18, he's calling them my Lord. So we got these, these men, these angels, the Lord, looking like men. You understand? This is the Lord, because Abraham and Lot bowed down before them. And believe me, Abraham, especially Abraham, Abraham didn't worship no one but God. So right here I'm showing that, that even though these... This is the Lord. They they came as angels, but they appeared as men, to men. We looked at them as men. And in the scriptures, the term angel of the Lord, and there's others, usually means, and like I said, there's, there's a teaching here, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Usually it's talking about Jesus. Okay, in most of the verses where you read this, it's usually talking about Jesus. When it says angel of the Lord or the angel, it's usually talking about Jesus. And even though it says, then the angels hasten Lot to leave, like I said, they don't worship angels. They didn't worship angels. In in fact, the angels even say, hey, don't worship me. Angels said, do not worship us. Angels know better than to take on worship. Okay? Now the Bible says to focus on the message they bring. And Jude, chapter 13 verse 3 and 6 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto women and said unto her behold now thou art barren and bearest not but thou shalt conceive and bear a son then in verse 6 now this woman that the angel of the Lord is speaking to then the woman came and told her husband saying a man so he's calling she's calling this angel a man i just shown that every time an angel appears, the people we take it, we see him as men. I'm just That's what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you the verses where it says the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman. And then when she went to her husband, she said, a man of God. Okay? Y'all with me so far? In the New Testament, it shows the same thing. Mark chapter 16, verse 5 and 6. And entering into the sculpture, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not frightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay him. The young man that is talking about here, it's an angel. Because all men, even the disciples at that time, thought Jesus was dead. So this man that they, this young man that was sitting on the side, that was an angel, and he spoke and said, "Are you looking for Jesus? He's not here." That was an angel. Now Hebrews, now Hebrews, now listen, Hebrews thirteen two. We believe the word of God, right? Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. What's this verse saying? Who who's, who can interpret this verse for me? It means you better not be nice to strangers or people you meet because it might actually be it might be an angel. This is the, this is New Testament. I mean, does this do anything to you? Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby. Some have entertained angels unaware. You might have entertained or been with an angel and didn't even know it. And this this is New Testament. This is this hasn't changed. So angels walk the earth. They appear as men. Like I said, nowhere in the Bible does it say they appear as women or children. They always appear as a man. But angels walk the earth. And the and the Lord is saying right here, Hey, you never know when you're entertaining an angel. So we should always, if you're walking with the Lord, if you're walking in the Spirit, you shouldn't have no problem entertaining an angel. Because you can be walking in the Spirit. Now if you're walking in the flesh, and you're entertaining an angel, that's not good. If you cuss this man, because of your attitude or your impatience, and you cuss him, this could be an angel. Do you hear me? 
This is what it's saying right here. You never know when you're going to be in the presence of an angel. Now, as far as guardian angels, now guard, guardian angels are not in the Bible, okay? Guardian angels. Because guardian angels means you always have an angel right there. That's what people believe guardian angels are. Well, they, you don't, we don't have guardian angels, but we do have angels that watch out for us. We do have that. They protect us. In Acts chapter 12, verse 6 through 11. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and was not that it was true which was done by the angel, but though he saw a vision. He thought he saw a vision, but this was an angel. And like I said, it's not, it was a man. In verse 10, when they were past the front and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them on his own accord, and they went out, talking about the angel, and passed on through one, one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hands of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. This hasn't changed. Angels protect us. When, the, when, the, when it's God's will and his direction, when he tells the angel, hey, go take care of this. Go protect my child. Because we're all children of God when you become born again. So I'm showing you right here, this angel took care of Peter. Took care of him. And just because it was back then, that doesn't mean it's not today. And whatever happened back then is for today. Like I said before, if it wasn't, then, then, you know, why read the Bible? We are learning. We're learning right here that God has angels and He sends them to take care of us. But again, let me say, they're not guardian angels like we sometimes call them. A guardian angel is an angel that stays with you all the time. Nowhere in the Bible does it, does it show that angels stay with us all the time. Only when we need them. Now God is speaking to Jesus in these verses. Hebrew 1, verse 13 and 14. But to which of the angels saith he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make the enemies of thy, of thy footstool. This is God's, he told Jesus this. But he says, which of the angels did I say this to? Which he didn't. He never told an angel that. He told Jesus he was going to sit on his right hand, but he never told an angel that. And then in verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent from the sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So he didn't tell the angels, hey, you're going to sit on my, my right hand and make the, your enemies with thy footstool. He didn't say that to the angels, but he, he said that to Jesus. He said to the angels, he said angels are ministering spirits. That's what angels are. They're supposed to minister to us. Heirs of salvation. Who's heirs of salvation? Born again Christians. So if you're born again Christian, you have a, a minis uh, uh, an angel who will minister you to you when you need it. We are blessed. We are blessed. I mean, really think about this. I don't know if, you've, if we've ever really thought about it. The Bible says there are angels who watch over us. Not stay with us, but when we need protection, there are angels there. I mean, can we take that in? Angels are there to protect us. If, God, if it's God's will that He doesn't want anything to happen to us at that time, at that moment, He'll send an angel and say, Hey, take care of her. I'm serious. Angels, they watch over us. They take care of us. We're blessed. We're blessed. Lost people don't have an angel. Lost people don't have these angels that God listens to them and, and God says, Hey, my, my, my son over there, 
go take care of him. He's, he's getting into a bad scene or whatever. Lost people can't count on that. We are privileged that we have angels that God sends to protect us. Amen? I don't know if y'all hearing me. Yes, we're hearing you. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't hear anything. Yeah. God has angels to protect us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then many times in the Bible, it says, many times in the Bible, when he's talking to whoever, it says, I will send my angel before thee. I will send my angel before thee, showing this angel will clear the way to make sure everything's okay. That this person will re he'll arrive safe or whatever it may be. But many times in the Bible, it says, I will send my angel before thee, whoever he's talking to. Many times... An angel, like I said, will speak to you from the Lord. Just like yeah, I showed uh, Zachariah, the angel spoke to Zachariah. The angel spoke to Mary. The angel spoke to Joseph, Mary's and spouse, husband, to be husband. The angel spoke to him about Jesus. So many times the angels speak to us. And there's times when an angel will be sent by God to fight a battle. To take care of the people. And these angels usually kills the people. If you're in danger, if Israel is in danger of another nation taking them over, there's, there's read the Old Testament. It's been to where the Lord sent, and not angels. It doesn't say angels with an S. All it takes is one angel. It takes one angel to kill thousands of men. Read the Old Testament. He sent an angel to kill thousands of men because they were threatening Israel. So the Lord protects us. Just like He protected them back then, He can protect you today. But guess what? you got to be walking in, in the will of God. you got to be walking in the will of God to have that protection. If you're outside the will of God, He's not there. He's not there to protect you. Remember that. Also, Daniel chapter I didn't write that down. You might want to write it. Daniel chapter 6 verse 22. God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. It says in verse 22 chapter 6. It says that God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. So they wouldn't hurt Daniel. Now we should have known that story from when we were young. Daniel Daniel being thrown into the lion's den and the lions didn't eat him. Right here it said God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. This is not a kid story. This is for real. An angel shut the lion's mouth so they couldn't hurt Daniel. An angel gave Jesus, gave Jesus strength. An angel gave Jesus strength. Remember, Jesus on earth was 100% man and he needed some strength. In Luke 22, 43 it says that, that the angel gave Jesus strength. And then in Acts 5.19, again, the angels let the apostles out of jail, just like they did Peter. We're right here in Acts 5.19, it talks about an angel uh, opening the doors for the apostles that were in jail. Also in Acts 12.7, Peter was in prison, and the angel broke the chains that were on him. So angels are here. This is all New, the New Testament I'm reading you. Nothing has changed. So we need to amen, praise God, whatever it is that, it, that makes you excited, you need to do it. Because we have angels watching, just like the, he watched over the disciples, Paul, Peter, the apostles, Daniel. Just like he watched over them, he can watch over us. Now that doesn't mean nothing bad is ever going to happen to us, because I'm talking about uh, death in the family. I mean, we're all going to, I mean, we all have to die, but the Lord is with us. I'm talking about if if a, if you're going down the highway and you're by yourself and you're walking with the Lord, He's going to protect you. He's going to send an angel to protect you. I believe that. I believe that because of what the scriptures say. And show. They don't just say it. He shows it where the angels took care of men. Men of God. Amen? Now, nowhere in the Bible does it speak about fallen angels appearing as men. Fallen angels. Now, these all these angels I've been talking about are angels of God. Angels that stayed in heaven. Now, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about fallen angels appearing as men. Because all the angels that I've talked about are angels of God. And all everything that I showed you, they did good things. 
They warned you. They protected us. They were angels of God. How did the fallen angels appear? Fallen angels, are, are they look the same as angels. I mean, they're just demons. But they, we think, because just the way we were raised, demons look like devils with horns and, and red and all that. Demons are angels. In fact, remember, devil, Satan, was the most beautiful angel in heaven, the Bible says. So demons and the devil don't look like we make them appear on TV and pictures. We did that. Men made pictures of them like that. But the Bible says they're angels. They're beautiful. But they're fallen angels. But nowhere in the Bible does it speak about a fallen angel appearing as a man. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about them taking on human form. This is fallen angels I'm talking about now. When you read the Bible, you read many times that fallen angels, which are demons, were always trying to possess a body. They were always trying to possess a body or an animal. They don't come in the, in, in the form of a man. They always wanted to get into a man where angels of God could appear as men. But the fallen angels, Acts 19, verse 15 and 16 and the evil spirit answered and said, No, <clears throat> Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Now, right here is talking about some Jews who were trying to imitate the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. They were going around trying to cast demons out of people. But this is what happens when you're not real. When you're not a real born-again Christian, demon rec demons can recognize that. Just like right here. These guys... They weren't Christians, but they were trying to act like they were Christians by trying to take uh, taking the spirits out of men that were possessed. And when they got to this man, the, the evil spirit, which is an angel, the fallen angel, said, Hey, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? These weren't men of God, and the devil recognized that. So they can't appear as men, but they can possess men. Also animals, you know. But in verse 16, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and came on them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house and fled out of the house naked and wounded. So the man who was had the evil spirits in him, which is fallen angels, demons, the man who had that in him, overpowered them and attacked them with such violence. Now the, 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 the fallen angels that was in this man. Which these Jewish people were men. Were trying to cast them out. Cast the demons out of this man. But since they weren't true born again Christians. The devil says. The demons say who are you? We know Jesus and we know uh, Paul. But who are you? And what they did. They took the man that they possessed. And right here is this man overpowered them. And attacked them. So demons can possess a body. They can possess a body, but they can't be a body like a man. Do you understand? Matthew 8, verse 28 through 32. We're, <clears throat> we're going to talk about how they, they go into animals also. Not just man, but animals. And when, he was a, and when he was come to the other side, talking about Jesus, and when he was come to the other side into the country of Gersesimi, there met him two possessed with devils. They were possessed. Coming out of the tombs. Exceedingly fierce. So that no man might pass that way. And behold they cried out saying. What have we to do with thee Jesus. Thou son of God. See demons. Demons know who Jesus is. These religious leaders that I talked about. That I talked about last time. These religious leaders. Didn't want to recognize them. Here we get the demons saying, Hey, you are Jesus, Son of God. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? See, before the time. So these, these demons, they already know they're, they're where, they're, where they're heading. Just like the devil quoted the scriptures to Jesus when he attempted them for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil knows the scriptures. The demons know, know the scriptures too right here. Because art thou come hither to torment? They know they're going to be tormented. But they're saying, are you going to torment us before it's time? Verse 30, And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine, pigs, feeding. 
So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of pigs. And he said unto them, Go. And when they came, came out of the men, they went into the herd of pigs. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Again, I'm showing. Not only did they possess bodies, but they were like, let us go in them pigs. And that's the saying right here, right? He said, let us go in them pigs. So they can possess a body or an animal, but like men, like angels of God, they can't appear as men. They can only possess. Now back to the sons of God. This is when Moses confronted Pharaoh to let his people go. Exodus 4.22 And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Israel is my son. God said that. God said, Israel is my son. Unless all Jews, this is Jews, Jewish men, Israel is my son. So he's talking about Jewish men, right? Israel is my son. Unless all Jews are fallen angels, you see where I'm going? Unless they're all fallen angels, this sons of God is not right. Right here, God is saying, Israel is my son. Now this is calling the men of Israel sons of God. Right here. He's calling the men of Israel, these are my son. Sons of God. Y'all got that? Now in Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, now these are angels, but not fallen angels. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now here's speaking, like I said, about angels, not fallen angels. Remember I taught on Job, and I showed how the angels and Satan appeared before God? The angels and Satan. He's separating Satan and the angels because he says, and Satan also. They didn't, they didn't come together as a group devil and his demons. See what I'm saying? It says the sons of God, which here it does mean angels, but it's not fallen angels. And also Satan. So Satan was not an, an angel of God. He was a fallen angel then. Because later on, as we know through Job, Satan asks God, you know, let me have Job. And so on and so on, on that teaching, remember? But what I'm showing here is separating the two. It's separating the two. When he said Satan came also. So we, if there were fallen angels, then they would have came together. It would have said they. The angels and Satan came. But it didn't say that. It says the, the sons of God, which were the angels, good angels, and also Satan. That word also was very important. Remember, Lucifer was an angel. And he went against God. And when God kicked him out of heaven, he changed his name to, to, uh, to Satan. It was Lucifer. Then he changed it to Satan. Because like I said, the sons of God in that one verse does mean angels, but not fallen angels. Hebrews 1.10 Yet the number of the children, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Who is the sons of the living God? Who is he speaking to? Right at the very top. He said, Yet the number of the children of Israel. He's calling them the sons of the living God. So sons of the living God means angels only in one in Job. That's the only place where he calls angels sons of God. But they weren't fallen angels. And right here he's calling Israel, which I've already showed you in a verse before. But right here I'm showing you again. Israel, the men of Israel are called sons of God. So if you read above this, it's talking about the Israel. It's talking about Israel and Judah. The men of Israel and the men of Judah. And he's calling them the sons of the living God. Many times in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament it says that God is the father of Israel. So if he's the father of Israel, what makes Israel? His sons. Jude 5, 6. I will therefore put in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord 
having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. Judas bring to the remembrance what happened to the Jews. What happened to the Jews when, when the Lord took them out of Egypt? What happened to the Jews? Israel. They took on other gods. And the Lord destroyed them. Who believed not. Who didn't believe. Verse 6. Well, right here the Lord has shown that he does bring judgment. He brings judgment on those who don't obey. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not the first estate. Now who's he speaking about here? The angels which kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels which kept not their... Talking about fallen angels. They didn't stay in heaven because they disobeyed. They wanted to follow the devil. So that... He's talking about these... He's talking now... Right here he's talking about fallen angels. And the Lord has shown us that he has destroyed and brought judgment on the men of Israel. And he's speaking about the angels who didn't obey God and chose to follow Satan... And were kicked out of heaven. And as we know, God has a place for them. Just like it says here. But they're not going to go there until the great white throne judgment. Remember on the last days I taught great white throne judgment? That's for lost people. That's not for us. We're going to appear before the Lord on the judgment seat. Judgment day. But not the great white throne judgment is for lost people. And this is where the demons are going to be also. It's not now because what it says in First Peter, First Peter chapter five verse six, this hasn't happened to him. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So that's now. That's still going. he hasn't been taught. He hasn't been thrown into the lake of fire. So the Lord says, watch out for him. Just as the demons followed the devil against God, they're going to follow him into the lake of fire also. So, sons of God in Genesis 6 is talking about men of Israel. You have the teaching. You have the scriptures. If anybody comes up to you and says, hey, aliens are the fallen angels, demons, made it with women on earth. You got the teaching right there in your hand. You got the scriptures so no, to show them. No, that's not true. Sons of God in verse, in uh, chapter 6 of Genesis, is talking about sons of, of God. It's talking about Israel. It's talking about the men of Israel. Like I said, there's only one place. Sons of God means angels. And that was in Job, but it's not fallen angels. It's just talking about God's angels. Angels that didn't rebel.